Hey guys, this is Tattoo Tony and welcome back to another adventure. Today we're exploring inside the beautiful Jamestown Mall located in Blackjack, Missouri. This is an article regarding plans to demolish the mall after a plan fell through to turn it into some sort of industrial warehouse. Of course people didn't want that near their middle class suburban neighborhoods and I don't blame them. Uh, here's some old photographs from inside the mall to show you what it once looked like and here is some drone footage flying down the corridors inside the mall now in this video we're going to explore the lower floor of what I believe to be the Dillard's the makeup counter the GNC the Foot Locker and go back and see where homeless people are living in the mall they took a lot of mattresses out of some of the department stores and put them in the corridors that are behind stores and in storage rooms and set up shop. There's some old Christmas wrapping paper, maybe from a display, uh, maybe from those little uh, spots you go into in the mall where they wrap your Christmas presents for you. There's some leftover furniture in the department store and a couple broken display TVs. There's a uh, calculator in what looks to be a burnt piece of wood. So here's what's left of, uh, I guess, the cosmetic department. And there's Andrew continuously saying, wow, I asked him to stop, but he wouldn't. By the way, if you'd like Andrew to stop saying wow in my videos, go over to Old and Fat Exploration and leave him a comment. That looks like uh, maybe the one beauty care product that's still left. That bottle in that last shot. All your top brands were here in Jamestown Mall. Now if you guys want to know more about the history of this mall, there's some other great videos online where they uh, kind of read from a Wikipedia page or something like that and tell you all about it. What I do know is that this mall was built sometime in the 70s, and interestingly they really started to expand the mall in the 90s, maybe 1994, 98, um, adding on to the mall and adding more anchor stores. And then what's kind of you know interesting is that just let's see 1998 so about 16 years later the mall closed down now I did work in this mall and sell cell phones at a cellular store and even by 2001 2002 I believe the mall was starting to decline and the reason I say that is because uh, rather than there being quite as many, you know, chain mall stores, there are more in, more and more independent stores moving in. And some of them were kind of like, no offense, but crummy dollar stores with cheap stuff from, you know, China and dollar items like, a, almost like a knockoff Dollar Tree inside the mall. That's never good news. That does not mean your mall is headed in the right direction. Here we are going out into the corridor. Uh, we're going to enjoy a little more drone footage here in a second, so strap in. Remember, go over to Old and Fat Exploration. Ask him to start putting up videos. He's filmed a ton of stuff on explorations with me that you guys have never seen uncounted uncharted amounts of photographic material there are some skylights 
It's kind of a neat push cart sitting out in the hallway. I kind of used it as a spot to rest my backpack. So, the first part of this video was already put up, and if you missed it, go back and check out episode 1. And if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, and share. And also, remember to check out the other 400 videos we have up of abandoned places from uh, some of the worst neighborhoods in the United States. And I don't mean that offensively, but some of the most dangerous and decaying and dilapidated places that you'd ever want to go. Here's a little interlude showing the floor. I do plan on this series being the most complete record of the state of the Jamestown Mall in St. Louis, Missouri. Showing and documenting what it looked like or looks like now currently, probably right before it's demolished, I would imagine this summer. There's a picture of the old directory and one of the signs that used to adorn the edge of the property. Look at all that, uh, I don't know, what is that? It's, uh, like a crust moss? A crustaceous moss. Growing all over the floor. <clears throat> there were definitely some, uh, parts of this building that had flooded and some other parts of this building that had had fires lit in them. Uh, that was the grass inside that, whatever you call it, around that statue. And here we are going into a GNC. I never realized a GNC was this deep. Do you guys remember these stores being this large? Here we are on our way to the back, and uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of the places where homeless people were or are living. Employees only, guys. It's a good thing I work here. Now, see, there are some areas where... Uh, these jugs of water and food trash congregate and I believe these to be areas that uh, the unhoused frequent this little desk up here has some medication and some personal care items lined up along with some sort of documentation or personal document in the Spanish language. That looked like it might be an asthma inhaler. And there somebody has flipped a mattress on its side probably to keep it from getting wet or too dirty so they can come back and sleep on it later. Here we are in the stock room behind the old footlocker. Does anybody recognize this sign and know what this is about? Could somebody try calling that number? Is it still in service? Is it still InfoQuest? It looks like at some point somebody had taken up residence in the Foot Locker.
that looks to be the sales counter where they could ring you out for a $250 pair of Air Jordans even though you're not that good at basketball. The world's most complete footwear store. And of course, while you purchase your Air Jordans, you can pay with MasterCard. Since for most people, working minimum wage, a pair of uh, tennis shoes might cost a week's paycheck. But it's well worth it. Money well spent. You can't believe how many abandoned buildings and homes I found abandoned pairs of Air Jordans in, and I thought, man, somebody really paid good money for those. Why are they always? Why are there always Air Jordans laying around? This looks like a nice comfy room. It sure beats sleeping under an overpass. Maybe the most important thing malls ever did for the community was house the homeless after they closed down. And the big box stores provided mattresses and sheets. I wonder where this came from. You'll see that in the next video. That is, uh, the Holiday Post Office. Does anybody watching the uh, video have any bad experiences sitting on Santa's lap? Here we are taking another little flight down the mall corridor and there's Andrew walking around filming and taking photographs. Uh, yet another collection of uh, documentation that he may or may not put up online. And there's a picture of the old food court. Towards the end of this mall's life, it no longer had your normal uh, uh, chain food venues. They started to get really... Um, I don't know, iffy, small time, I don't know. At the time I worked there, it still had your normal fare, your pretzel time, your Sabaros, China Express, stuff like that. And uh, there's the store directory. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, share, and stay tuned for the next several episodes exploring the world's most dangerous mall.